Hey, this is Steve, V6WZ. Hey, I thought I'd share with you guys some details and construction tips of this four-way passive splitter I built. I'll include a BOM and some links to the PCB Gerber files if you want to make your own. Uh, sure, you know, you could buy one, but this design's really easy to build and only costs around $24. It's a fun project, too. Um, my design uses these small uh, Murata surface mount chokes for both the Magic T combiners uh, as well as the impedance transformers. So this makes it easy to build since now we don't have to wind uh, those binocular cores. Properly designed splitters are important for routing RX antennas to multiple radios. Here, for example, an RX antenna could be split and shared with a transceiver and say multiple other SDR radios. Each output will be down 6 dB. Well, of course it will be. If we split it once, that's half the power, or 3 dB. Then we do that again, we're down 6 dB. Using my VNA, I measured my device and I see about 6.4 dB at each port. That's about 0.4 dB of insertion loss. When all ports are properly terminated, and that's important, the port to port isolation uh, will vary uh, somewhere between minus 48 to minus 30 dB between ports, between any one port. Here's a photo of the SDR stack at my remote station. On the bottom I have two Perseus radios, which I use to record the medium wave band. Above that, uh, above each is an SDR IQ uh, radio, which are uh, used to skim and send RBN spots uh, from various antennas. To the left, the black box is a QS1R radio. That's a nine band skimmer, which I use to send spots to RBN as well. And above that, a Kiwi radio. So obviously, at my station, there's a real need to have splitters. Here is a schematic of the device that I built using KiCad. There are three uh, Magic T's, or hybrid combiners, T2, T3, and T4. I'm not going to explain the theory behind Magic T's, uh, because I already did make a dedicated video about that, and uh, if you're interested, I'm going to put the link at the bottom of the video here. Uh, traditionally, uh, Magic Tees are, use uh, binocular cores with a bifiler winding of about 5 to 10 turns and uh, kind of configured uh, like this. However, let's use these little SMD guys made by Murata. They only cost $1.60 each, and obviously this would be a lot easier than winding cores, but uh, do they work? Well, uh, these devices were made and designed to be common mode chokes, and I do use them for that in a lot of my RX antenna devices. But if you look at the uh, device schematic, um, basically uh, it's a bifiler uh, wound core, just like what we need. Shown below are the four devices in the 5000 series of these devices, and they come in increasing inductance from 470 microhenries uh, up to 4.7 microhenries. I ordered a bunch of these guys and tested them all with my VNA for CMC insertion loss, transformer loss and phase stability, and Magic T insertion loss and port-to-port -port isolation. I also tested a binocular core device. I won't go through all the details, but the lowest induction, uh, inductance uh, Murata unit, the 5474 device, tested the best, uh, both as a transformer and as a Magic T. And it was comparable, and in some respects even better, than the binocular core unit. Looking at the schematic again, if we work backwards from the right to the left this time, we can see that we're combining two 75 ohm input ports through Magic T, T3, so we end up with half of that, 37 and a half ohms. And the same is true with the bottom two ports. Then we need to combine uh, those two 37 and a half uh, together through Magic T T2. We end up with half of that, 18.75 ohms. Well now, of course, we have to match that back to our 75 ohm input impedance. We do that with a uh, matching transformer, uh, T1. This is a four to one impedance transformer. Now a 4 to 1 impedance transformation has a 2 to 1 winding ratio. On top, this is an isolation uh, design where the 18.75 ohm input has 5 turns and the output 75 ohms has double that, 10 turns. Below is the auto transformer architecture. It's the same thing. The 18.75 ohm uh, input is 5 turns above ground. The 75 uh, ohm port is a total of 10 turns above ground. 
Now, here's the really cool thing. We can use one of those Murata chokes. It's not five turns uh, of, on the coil, but it's, uh, they're equal. They're symmetric. 18.75 turns will be uh, X turns to ground. The 75 ohm uh, output will be a double that to ground. We've just saved ourselves winding a binocular core. I designed the PCB in KiCad and uh, ordered the boards, sadly, from China. I got five boards for about five dollars, a minimum order of uh, five boards. Uh, you know, the shipping was more than that. I usually combine it with uh, ordering other circuit boards. Uh, don't be afraid to use these little SMD Murata chokes. Uh, you can use a small tip on your soldering iron, uh, but honestly, first, uh, you really must uh, use flux. I use this uh, paste, uh, though there's other types you can use. I use a little uh, uh, you know, a toothpick and uh, spread it on. It can be a little bit messy, but uh, the key uh, is to, to have flux on there. Don't even try it without that. I'll usually place the device uh, on the board by hand. Sometimes you can use a, um, a pair of tweezers if you want to uh, line it up better. I use this fine uh, solder. Um, you know, you can use really fine hair-like solder, but um, as long as it's fine enough. A small tip on your iron, uh, load your iron with a little drop, hold the device down with your finger and just touch the one pin and it should uh, lock that pin into place. The flux will allow it to, uh, to flow very easily. I'll then just touch each one up uh, very quickly with a touch of solder and it's really quite simple to do. A little tricky with the uh, camera here, I couldn't quite get around it very well. One thing you will notice once you're done, uh, especially using the flux like this, it's often pretty goopy with flux. I'll show you in a minute how to clean that flux off. And hey, if you have an electric frying pan, you can always use that to reflow solder paste. I made another video on using an electric frying pan for solder paste for SMD devices. I'll put a link to that at the bottom of the video as well. Chipquick makes this low temperature solder paste, which is what I use. In the BOM, I'll include a link if you wanted to buy that. But it has a temperature reflow profile that works with the electric frying pan. Uh, you can do two things, either squirt it on with the little needle that comes with the device and the syringe, or use a toothpick. I'll usually place the device on ha uh, by hand. In the case of these Murata chokes, you can, or use a pair of tweezers. Uh, they're big enough that you can manage that. It's not critical that you get them exactly uh, lined up because the reflow process will pull them into place. Ready to go. These are always fun to watch. Time to clean this board off. You know, it's a fair bit of flux with the one we hand soldered. Um, I use uh, this MG Chemical stuff um, flux remover, although any type will work. It's the heavy duty stuff. Uh, what I find is very helpful is to, uh, to spray it uh, and then use a toothbrush. Preferably don't use the toothbrush to brush your teeth afterwards, but this really helps to loosen things up. Another very important thing to do is to clean a board when you're on the F connectors, especially. I haven't finished this board, but if you're mounting a board outside, especially if you've got a bias T where you've got voltage on an F connector, make sure you clean it because uh, residual uh, flux can gather debris and cause noise issues. Uh, we rinse it with water afterward. That removes any of the residual flux that might be uh, uh, carried along, uh, and it really provides a nice clean end result. I'll dry it off, and uh, we'll be good to go. You can use, by the way, uh, you, can, you can throw it in your dishwasher, too. That's another uh, method for cleaning uh, boards. Just put it on the uh, cutlery rack. Ah, it looks a lot better. So, finish populating the board. That's pretty simple. There's just uh, two 150 ohm resistors and one 75 ohm uh, resistor. Uh, the F connectors, you can use a vertical F connector. You can mount it uh, on uh, either side, uh, front or the back. You can also uh, use a 90 degree uh, F connector. Um, 
but uh, notice that the PCB board um, has a, uh, a low impedance ground plane on the bottom. Okay, that's a solid piece of copper on the bottom. So if we mount the uh, 90 degree connector like this, and if we happen to have a copper uh, a ground plane under the board, um, then using spacers and some screws, we can screw it uh, to the copper base. Um, and then the under, between the underlying ground plane uh, and the uh, copper uh, PCB ground plane, we've got uh, good uh, isolation for any noise that might uh, ingress into the device. For example, this is one of the splitters mounted at my remote station, just to show you what I'm uh, getting at here. And using these 90 degree F connectors, I have lots of room for my uh, RG6 or 59 uh, interconnects. Uh, and what I've done was uh, mount a, a large sheet of copper. You can buy this very thin paper-like copper sheeting, which uh, uh, allows for me to include a lot of different uh, switching and combiner devices and uh, using that PCB ground plane on the back of each circuit board against the uh, ground plane, which is integrated into the ground system, uh, provides a lot of uh, isolation from any shack noise. To mount the uh, device in a box, it's a pretty easy uh, system. Um, you know, you could use a, a plastic uh, box. Uh, I, you know, these Hammond 1591 CSBKs can work. There'd be others too. With the common ground plane on the circuit board, you can uh, usually get away with that. But if you're fastidious about uh, ingress of noise, you could use this Hammond uh, metal box, a 1550C, uh, quite a bit more expensive. Um, you know, we want to mount, uh, I like to mount them on the lid. It's easier to access. Um, so what the, the way we do it is just get uh, some of one of the extra circuit boards that you got because uh, you have to order usually five at a time. Make sure that you you lay the board onto the top, the, you know, the right way around um, so that you can use it as a template and, um, you know, just mark out each hole using the center pin of each F connector. Um, drill it out. Um, I have a drill press, but you could use a hand drill, I'm sure, and, uh, and use the associated uh, nuts. I did say that I tested the uh, splitter with my Nano VNA. This is my test setup with the laptop running the Nano VNA. And uh, here is the uh, input to output uh, gain uh, at different frequencies. Uh, 6.4 dB uh, in, uh, in and around uh, the 160 meter band, 6.4 dB on 80 meters at 6 megs in and around 6.4 dB. Up around uh, 15 meters, it's uh, a little bit more loss of 6.8 dB. And um, this is the port to port isolation, again, changing with frequency. It's best on 160 meters with uh, 49 dB down between ports and uh, a little bit worse, uh, only 30 dB down on uh, 15 meters. Uh, one thing I did mention, and this is vital, uh, if you build one of these and choose not to uh, use all of the ports, you must terminate the unused ports in a 75 ohm uh, termination. I bought these little guys on Amazon. They're really cheap. I don't know how good they are, but they do seem to work okay. I measured them. They're pretty close to nominally 75 ohms. These little Murata chokes have been a lifesaver. This is a photo of uh, my uh, broadside beverage combiner uh, in my shack. I combine a total of eight beverage wires uh, in, in the shack, and then each of those pairs is split into two channels. And each of those channels is then split uh, in a, with a four-way splitter uh, going to various uh, receive antennas. And that's not to mention all the combiners that I uh, have in the field uh, for my end fire pairs. Uh, you know, without uh, these little Murata chokes, I'd, I'd be spending hours uh, winding these little uh, binocular cores. Uh, I hope you uh, learned something and had fun watching my video, and maybe it's given you some ideas. 73, this is Steve, B6WZ.